Hey, what's up everyone? I hope you're all having a wonderful time. So we're going to take another look on a theory of a build uh, that uh, will be available in 1.0 and I'm calling it the need for speed ghost flame lich. The build idea is that we want to go fast and deal damage while we are moving and I think that this is going to be a really strong build not only damage wise but uh, tanky as well as we are going to get tons of ward here also. Basically we want this to be able to zoom through monoliths really fast as in every RPG pretty much. Speed is the key, right? So let's start with how the build is going to work. We're focusing around my new favorite skill Ghost Flame and the skill will shoot out flames in front of us dealing a fire and necrotic damage and we can also spec into this so we can use this as a mobility skill and deal damage while moving. Mostly when we have a skill like this that uh, the damage is divided it can be tough to scale the damage right. But for this skill we can change it so both the necrotic and fire is transformed into physical instead. And what we've seen so far for the skill, uh, the skill have a 600% added damage effectiveness which also is just a crazy high number. Uh, maybe they change it, we have to wait and see until the release, but if this is that high uh, we can get some pretty nice damage numbers from this alone I feel. The negative side of the skill is that it cannot hit as it is a damage over time skill and uh, by this we cannot crit with this as well. By using Fist of Bones and also Fuel of Anguish we're also going to shoot off Marrow Charge 3 times per second roughly. And this do work as a hit and I'll be talking a bit about why this is important later on. But from Marrow Shards we are going to get some really nice uh, damage modifiers here from the skill tree alone. Both for crit and normal hit damage multipliers. And I do feel that this skill is going to be helping a lot for the single target aspect of this build. But we're also going to get a chance of getting some mana to sustain the uptime of Ghost Flame here. From Rip Marrow and also Lifeblood we get a total of 40% chance to gain a Marrow Orb on hit. And then we also have Spirit Feast which will give a 33% chance from the Marrow Orb to uh, gain us some mana back. So in total we get 40% for the Marrow Orb and then we have 1 in 3 chance to getting the 15 mana here. I believe it's around 15% per hit maybe. Tell me in the comments if you know the exact number. And then we also have Rip Blood. And this will give us also some mana back. But uh, for this we're using Mana Feast. And uh, this will make it so we do have to use skill ourselves uh, to be able to get it. We do however have a automated cost for Rip Blood as well. And this is going to be from the new Warlock passive tree. And here we have the Cauldron of Blood. When you cast a physical skill and enemies within 15 meters have a combine of 25 or more stacks of bleed, you will cast Rip Blood up to 5 nearby enemies and gain Bleed Overload, which will last for 12 seconds. And then we have Crimson's Favor, which makes it so when we trigger Bleed Overload, we will cast Rip Blood at nearby enemies each second. And here is where the hits from the Mirror Shards come in which will start this whole loop and uh, then when we get our first Blood Overload we will get some extra bleed stacks here uh, even faster from Rip Blood as well. Not only do we deal damage from this but this will also work as a source of gaining ward. Rip Blood creates a orb of blood that will restore us 10 health. And then by using Quenching we also improve this by additional 20 health. We're also getting more health with Hematology here, 5% per intelligence. And then by using Arcane Fortress makes the Blood Orbs grant us ward instead of health, equals to half of what they have would restore to us. And with this current setup we would get around 120 ward each time from this. 
Bone Curse is another skill that we are using and here we also went with the Aura version. And this makes us drain mana per second and I'm not sure how fast the mana will get drained from this uh, combined with Ghost Flame. But the idea is that we have this up at the same time. And the way it works is that the enemies get the curse on them when we get close to them. And then when we hit them they take damage from the curse itself. And this is going to get triggered from Marrow Shard and Riplog. We're also going to get some extra armor shred chance from this skill as well. And if this all fails and it doesn't really work that much, we always have the Reaper form as we are playing the Lich. And here we get tons of bonuses just for... Uh, we get movement speed, we get damage, cost speed and a lot of great things from this skill. And then lastly we're using Transplant and it's going to be to regain some mana when we hit enemies with it. We get uh, Frenzy and Haste. But also so we can get ourselves some bone armor for some damage reduction here. And also this is going to be triggering the wrong warp which is the unique the build is built around. So wrong warp makes us get Chrono Warp for 10 seconds when we cast Teleport or Transplant. And this buff will give us 35% cast speed and also movement speed. When we do use Transplant we are going to be teleported to a random location which is not really going to be a problem as the build is so damn fast. We get some chance for haste on hit here and the big modifier which give us 3% increased spell damage per 1% movement speed. And at the moment with this build you can get upwards 160% of movement speed which is almost 500% increased damage from this unique alone and that's uh, quite a decent chunk of damage there. And the base itself is high tier base so we also get high spell damage from this as well. And then we're using Bone Claimer's Bar Boot for the ward per second per 3% uncapped necrotic resist. We're also using Ward of Malevolence which will give us ward per intelligence while we are channeling. Which is around 700 in total with this current setup. And combining this with Imperishable which also gives us ward decay threshold per 1% necrotic resistance. Which synergizes great with the helm. Telephone's Mirage gives a, a lot of great perks while we are channeling, making it a great fit for using Ghost Flame. A lot of dodge rating and also ward and mana when we dodge while channeling. And we're also going to get a ridiculous amount of dodge from the Wraith form passive uh, when we are using Ghost Flame. As you can see here we get uh, dodge rating per intelligence while channeling, this is 40. More dodge rating also while channeling. And this build is uh, at the moment around 180 uh, intelligence. This number is uh, quite crazy though, but you can get over 100 really easy for basically any Arcalite build. And then we're using the Falconeer and this is for the move speed basically. And uh, this is also a quite common unique to drop and it also usually have a couple of LP on it as well. We're using Abril Circuit and uh, this is a bit more rare to drop with LP on it uh, but here we can get up to 18% move speed per ring uh, if you are really lucky. And lastly we throw in a Thorn Slinger here, we get the plus 2 physical skills, some extra chance to bleed on hit and also a 6% increase to move speed. And here are the passive skill tree. I just go over them real quick here. You can pause the video if you like to, or you can also go to Last Epoch Tool page and check them out more for yourself. I will try and go over this build more as we get into the release of Last Epoch. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this video helpful. If you got any other questions, feel free to drop a comment and I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. Happy hunting everyone and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!